just starting this uh, workshop let's just wait for a few minutes and then we'll start hi everyone can you uh, tell me if my audio and um, audio is clear Let's just wait for a few minutes and then we'll start. Okay, we have six people joined in. Let's just wait for another 30 seconds and then um, we'll start the workshop. Please check if you can write comments. Um, make sure to like give StreamYard access before you write comments so that I can read it. And I'm going to share my screen now and um, we'll start walking through all the features and everything that Texo has. This is going to be kind of like very basic workshop where we'll be talking about spices, how to use it, how to run it, what, what is proxy and then the whole platform overview and uh, how we can use CSVs with spices. Then we'll build, build some like recipes, very, very basic recipes. And in the next workshop, we'll be doing some complex uh, recipes with our Zapier, Lamblist, Hyperize inter integrations. Okay, I think we have now uh, people joining in. I think we can get, uh, we can start the workshop so let me just share my screen and then um, let's do this okay we have uh, Gareth as well in the video um, he's helping me in making sure that like all the video and everything goes perfect uh, since we faced some issues um so yeah now i'm i'm inside texo and uh, we'll start with very basic overview of the whole platform and what each of these things does and then we'll we'll run some automations so um since you have uh, i'm sure that like everyone who's watching has have like texo account um so make sure to like log in and um if you are seeing this page then it's all good just make sure to like log in to texas so that we can get started okay great we have see we, can, we can, i can see comments now as well so it looks like all good um let me okay then i think we can we can get started so um when you when you first like log in after completing all the onboarding stuff this is the first screen that you will see right and all these things that you are seeing here are called texas spices so spices are basically a single automation that will do something on the web like maybe uh, liking a photo or finding a linkedin profile or uh, commenting something on any youtube channel uh, video or extracting all the members of any facebook or linkedin group right so these are like single activities that we do on different social media platforms and we can automate that using texas spices right so um texas spices are basically single individual automations which uh which basically like automates the work that you do just like explain like liking a video commenting on uh, a post and extracting some users 
So these are like Texas spices. And here we, we can do some search. Maybe like you can add uh, Facebook, right? Facebook and it will give you the spices that you are you have used previously. So this is like used spices. If you click on all, you will see like all these filters here, right? So if you want to say like, if you want to only see Instagram spices, you can just click here and it will show you like all the Instagram ones, right? Same goes for LinkedIn. So these are like all the LinkedIn spices that we have, right? And here are some recommendations. So recommended spices are basically the one that uh, you will be like, based on the questions that you answer during your onboarding, uh, we'll be recommending some spices that you should try based on the questions that you answered, right? So which platform you use the most, based on that, we will like just show you some recommendations. So you can see that here. And now um, let's go on the top. Here we have help. And on click of this, we will go to support documentation. And then here we have some tutorials. So if I click on tutorial, uh, I'll be taking to this page we, where we have like small videos of each of the things, like each of the features, like how you can run your first spice, how you can run your first recipe, why we implement limits, understanding enable proxies. We'll be going through all these basic things uh, in this workshop. And um, then here you can see your execution time. So each automation that you will run will have will take some amount of like time, right? So this will be like decreasing. And um, every time you run something, some of like some part of your execution time will be taken, right? So um, you can see that how much time is left here. Um, I'll be explaining you, but I'm going to like check the comments as well in the meantime. Um, and we'll be like discussing everything as well. So yeah, uh, here, this is your execution time. And here you have like release notes, right? So if, I, if you click here, uh, you'll be taking to release note where you can see all the different uh, features that we are bringing and uh, new updates that we are like releasing every week. So you, you can see all of that here. Um, and here we have some notification place where um, if like all the, all the automations that you are running, you can see the notifications here. If that anyone is like completed or it was like any warning or anything like that. And this is your account place. If you go to your account, you can see all your plans here, right? So I have like 240 minutes uh, per day, 24 parallel executions. Uh, I'll be coming to what is parallel execution in some time. Then I do have like recipe access, premium expire CCS, 120 emails I can find every day. Um, and I, the current plan that I have is like agency yearly. And my next payment is going to be on Friday, Feb 9, 2021. And these are like all the basic stuff, right? You can redeem your code here. And then first name, last name, basic stuff. And what you do. So this is these two things are very important. So um, based on what you choose here and the platforms that you uh, select here, based on that, we will show you recommendations, right? So this is very important. So let's say uh, if you use LinkedIn and Facebook a lot, um, I can just select like LinkedIn, Facebook and remove Slack and Twitter. And this is like automatically saved or even you can click here to save it, right? So um, now if I go to like recommended spices section that I just showed you previously, um i'll be seeing a lot of like facebook and linkedin spices so um make sure to like always keep this updated and based on that we will show you some better recommendations right that automation that you should build even the recipes that we'll be building in future will have some like targeted recipes email that you'll be receiving based on the platform that you use right so make sure to this this is like always updated in your account and um after, on after next like next is like proxies here you can add some proxy details. I'll be coming to this part in some time. And we have something called variables. I'll be discussing this part as well. And then subscription. Um, if you have like lifetime deal, you don't have to worry about this. But uh, if you are on free plan or if you have any plan, you can like change your plan and do all that stuff here. Okay, so this was accounts. And then let's go to recipes. So um, this, this place is like your where like all your recipes will be hosted, like all your recipes will be listed, right? So let's see what is there inside the recipe. Uh, I'm sure that if you are creating a new fresh account, you won't be like seeing all these things. 
So uh, you'll be seeing only this one button called create a new recipe. So if I click here, uh, this is the interface that I'll be seeing, right? And uh, guys, like, don't forget to like, add a comment if I'm going too fast. Just make sure to like drop a comment. I'm just trying to be uh, slow and like explain to you everything. These are like very basic things. How where a button is right and what each each of these things does right. So uh, if I'm going too fast, make sure to write a comment. Um, yeah, I'm coming to proxies and uh, yeah, I'm coming to Google Maps as well. Um, okay. So um, I was at recipes. So when you go to recipe and click click on like create a new recipe. These are like all the buttons that you'll be seeing, and this sidebar will show you um, the platforms, right? So this one is like save recipe button, where if I do something here, I'll click save, right? And it will be saved for me. And this is like run button. Since right now it is like, it, it is not like clickable because we don't have anything here, right? So if I add anything here, I can like run it. And this is undo, redo that we all know, right? If you want to go to previous stuff, we can do undo and if you want to go to like one step ahead we can do redo csp and google sheet very important part uh, how we can like reuse recipes and how we can make use of csv or google sheet to process like a lot of data at once using this button so i'll be coming to this part as well and variables here and then this is like use proxy button if i select the proxy name um, it will be saved for me and uh, anytime i run this recipe i'll be using this proxy and this button is for, let's say like you are running this recipe again and again, right? So you don't want to like do, done the same thing on the same data, right? So if you want to remove duplicates and you don't want to run that data again and again, you can check this box here, right? And here you can give your recipe a name. So I'm going to name this uh, Texo Workshop Recipe 1, right? and um, i'll just click save i'll be coming to this um later so this is this uh, done and then we have public recipe page where uh, we we have built some like recipes for you that you can use directly so if i click on this use this recipe button uh, all this recipe data will be like added in my recipe list and then i just all all, all i need to do is like just fill the data and click run right so it will start running the recipe um I'll be discussing more more about this like recipe and like how we can create re public recipes and all that in the in the next workshop. And this is like very important page results page where you see like all the logs. Uh, you download your uh, result right. So um, when I click on any any of these rows, I can see the logs right here. I can see which platform I'm using, and this shows like how much time I this this automation took right to complete right and um, these are like some warnings like update cookies and all that and this small icon that you are seeing here uh, it's called like edit execution name so if you want to name this execution something else you can just click here and edit it right so i can just do something and click done right so this will be like edited and uh, on top i have some filters called completed then failed ones then what is running right so you can do some filters uh, over the data that you are seeing on results page right and here you can like just search as well so if i type like link uh, i can see like all the linkedin ones right so if you name any of your say like you so this is going to be really useful when you name each of your execution right so you can basically search them and this this will be like a very good feature when you have like Hundred or maybe like five hundred executions that you had like run previously, right? So this search box will is going to be really helpful. And on the same tab here, we have recipes where you can run some recipes, and uh, you can see the logs and everything. You um, here same as the spices part, the platforms. Uh, then if I'm using Google Sheet, it shows here how much time it took. Results. If I click on result button um there's nothing here but um if if you click on like any result button um you will see things that you can download here you will see download csv button when you click on this csv will be downloaded right here we have go to this spice button if i click on this i'll be taking the spice page right 
So um, this was like the basics of Razor Space. Um, and uh, I think the two important thing here is that uh, you can select some spices here. And then if you want to like just remove that from, from the Azure page, you can click on this delete button and it will be removed, right? And you can even delete a single individual spice by clicking here. So these are like two other things. So um, till now what we did, um, if, if someone is like joining right now, uh, we just walked through like all the spices that we have, right? The basics of spices, what it does and everything. Then we, we, we have gone through like all the pages, like accounts, education time and everything. And then we went through recipe, public recipe page and results page, right? So this was like the basics overview of the whole platform. And we have two, two more things to cover. One is like CRM and the spice request page. Let me just check the comments quickly. Um, okay, uh, Gareth, you can, uh, I can, you can hear me clearly, right? And uh, even the audio is good or is there like any issues um, with it? I'm just hoping that everything is going well. Um, okay, so now let's let's go to CRM. Um, so CRM is like the place where you can see all your past educations at one place, right? So if you if you have used like say sixty spices, right? Um, and let's say you use uh, Scrap uh, Facebook group members, maybe like ten times or twenty times. CRM is the place where you will see all your like results at one single place, right? So if I click on this scrap menu, say several results, right? Um, let's say like I ran this automation maybe like 50 times. So I can see all of that data at one place, right? And um, this is like all combined into one. And then I can do a lot of things here. So this can get some like complicated, but uh, I'll be coming to this part later. But you can basically like select, you can view each each of the rows here. You can make some edits, right? And uh, let's go back. You can like edit rows. Um, you can set some column properties, which is coming very soon. You can like add some filters here, right? Uh, you can drag and drop each of the columns and move around, right? And then you can select some rows and go to actions go to actions and then like add some leads to lamb list if you have like emails here or you can select first name last name and domain name to find emails or even you can add like tag on column name i'll be coming to this part like later so um right now we are just going through like the overview right um and you, you can just like if you if you don't want to see let's say if you don't want to see company id you can click on this it will be like it won't be visible right so let's say i want i don't want to like see profile url so i'll just click here and profile url is gone right so um let's say if you have like too many fields and you don't want to like see them all of them at in one go you can just click on any of this eye icon and that should be gone okay so this was um basics of like crm part and then we have something called like spice request where um if you want to like have want to automate something um, of any non social media platform, uh, any website, then you can ask us to do that, right? And uh, we will build that for you. Okay, so this was like spices, uh, platform overview, recipes, CRM, digital space, and everything. Now let's run some spices. Um, let me just check quickly how many people we have. Um, Okay, we have 20 people. That's great. Um, I just hope that um, my audio and the video both are perfect. Um, if you if you are facing any issues with the videos, make sure to write a comment and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll see what we can do. Okay, so now um, let's run some spices. The very first one that I'm going to run is finding a LinkedIn profile, which is like the simplest one. It all it takes is full name, right? Basically first name and last name, and it will give you a LinkedIn profile. So um, let me try the first one as my name. 
and then we'll try someone from uh, our workshop and we'll see try to find his profile or her profile so when i clicked on uh, my like when i wrote the query and clicked on find a link profile what it will do it will send a request to our server and it will start the automation right and then once that automation is started it will show up here and you can see the logs it started at like 10 16 35 pm uh, invoking function this searching for query this on this right and done um, i'm not sure why it ran maybe like two times maybe i clicked twice but it found my profile um if i go to this profile yeah so let me just try to find someone from the community and this is going to be really useful when um, you have um, you have a lot of like profiles like first name last name and everything and we just want to like maybe contact that person on linkedin you can use this automation to find the linkedin profile and then you can contact them right so um, if i try to find um Garrett Ford, on LinkedIn, let's see if I can find him. And now I can like edit the spice. I can just write, right? So basically I'm just searching for Gareth. So I just wrote his name so that I can easily like check what this execution like was related to, right? So make sure to like rewrite execution name this is going to be really useful for you right um so i searched for Gareth book and like this is the profile that i got i'm not sure if he is the correct person but let's just check okay i'm not sure definitely he's not the Gareth that we know um yeah but yeah no, uh, let's see how we can improve the spice right so here we, we saw that like this takes first name last name right but we, we can improve it much more uh let's say like you have the first name last name and then you have like maybe the location or a company name or anything like that right and you can add that like data as well by se like separated by space so if i just maybe if i type um eric Put, right and well if i have the company name you can type the company name as well which is um the idea right uh, let's see if if, if we can like, now if this should like improve the search much more better since we have more details right so if you have company name if you have um company domain if you have uh user location anything like that like any data that extra data that you have apart from the full name you can add that like all of that separated by space and how you can do that using csv or Google sheet i'm coming to that point but yes uh, you can uh, if you have just one person you can simply add all of that details uh, separate by space right so this can be uh, the query will look something like full name and then company name uh, location right so this is how it should like look like Give, give a space and then write all the data and this will improve your query a lot right so i wrote um eric food b i g r which is eric's company and let's see if we can find the profile kill that occupation is um Why would I use Texo to find an individual profile on LinkedIn? That is a very good question. I would say, um, why why this? Uh, let's say like I just um, uh, let's say I'm using a type form to ask some details about a user. So um, let's say uh, I ask a few questions like your name, your email, and then um, some basic survey related questions, right? And then maybe like I want to find that person on LinkedIn, right? so that I can basically connect with that person and send him some message or anything like that, right? So it is a very good strategy to basically 
like have uh, that person in your network so that he can get some updates and even like once you get connected to that person you can even get his email right and then uh, if, if you don't have the email then you can get the email as well right so um, that is a very good thing of this uh, spice and if you are running the whole campaign on LinkedIn and you don't have the LinkedIn profile only the names then you can use this spice to like basically find all of that person on on LinkedIn so we we ran the spice using like Eric exit for DIZR and this is the profile I, I found let's just check quickly where is this yeah. okay so we have Eric and this was the correct profile so yeah you can improve your uh, results um, like up to like even like 80 percent if you add some additional data right maybe company name company domain or anything like that so make sure to like add that detail here okay so now um this was like the one which does not require a cookie let's check one which requires a cookie so i'm going to try um maybe search Sales Navigator, Sales Navigator, Company Search. Mm. I have Sales Navigator. Let's just try this one. So this, what, what this is going to do uh, is it will like pull all the results from Sales Navigator page, right? So if I go to my Sales Navigator page. And then let's just try something like um, growth hackers, right? And um, add the location, maybe uh, United States. And then relationship, I would say second degree connections, right? And then um, in title, I would say, um, Hacker. so okay this is very less actually I have five years okay let's just try i'm going to copy this url so once you add all the filters just copy this url from here and go back to TechZoc and paste the search url here and now this requires a cookie so what cookie will do it will like take the cookie from here and authenticate to the to linkedin as you right so you need to like fill the cookies and if you don't have like our extension, the button that you are seeing here will say get TechZoc Chrome extension, right? So once you get TechZoc Chrome extension, just refresh this page and that button will be converted into get cookie, right? And now if I click on this get cookie, the cookie will be automatically added in this field, right? Now uh, in the number of profiles, since only like there are like five regions, I'm going to keep this blank and you, we can pull like up to 2,500 profiles at once right so this is going to be really useful uh, for like sales and marketing people you can pull a lot of data um, at once and for proxies I'm not going to use proxy for this one but I highly recommend to use proxies um, we'll, we'll try one with proxy and one without proxy to see what what happens so now I clicked on extract search results and now it will start the automation for me with all that data um, invoking function this connected okay um, let me just check that. getting total five agents no more profile found in this page got five profiles and the execution was completed so I'll just click on results and see what what we have got Okay, so this got Brendan, uh, Gregory, Alexandra, Brian, and Matt. Uh, let's see if these are perfect. Yeah, Brendan, Brian, Matt. Okay, so looks like we got the results, right? Um, so this one was like, this one requires a cookie. So um, in LinkedIn, like only the fine LinkedIn profile uh, and even the fine company page will not require a cookie. And rest, most of the like spices will require a cookie so that we can basically log in or authenticate to 
platform as you and then pull the results that you have like created right the filters and other thing um even the find a link profile is going to be really important one when you have this company name or maybe like company domain and you want to find the profile or maybe like find the company page using that data so this is going to be really important one once you get the company profile you can just simply uh, run another spice to extract all the employees right and we are adding uh, one more spice which is going to be uh, find decision makers of any linkedin com company or any company and that will give you like the top five directors managers and every every like top execu executive level like person like their, their email address their names and everything so that spice is coming very soon on the platform that will be like find decision makers of of a company and that is going to be a really good one uh, for all the businesses okay so um let's try uh, one with, with csv and then we'll try one with google sheet as well i'm just going to check the comments quickly so that i'm not missing anything yes uh yes uh so this is once you get the preliminary profile you can basically like just uh send a connection request and then send a message as well right so uh, let's say like i i do a survey um on on type form basically i i'm just starting a new product or something or and then i just like type create a type form to get the first name uh email to send an invite and then do some like basic product surveys right and then maybe like if I add that person on LinkedIn, and then at some point he'll be seeing my post, right? If I if I'm if I'm constantly adding some post on my LinkedIn, that person will see that post, right? If he's in my network, right? So getting that person's LinkedIn profile and adding him in your network is very good thing, right? You'll be getting that like as long as you are showing your name to that person and showing your company name to that person, it creates a trigger that there is something uh, about the company which is really valuable right so this is more of like a psychological behavior if you keep showing the name uh, about your company to the same user again and again it creates a lot of trust so make sure to like any person who you are targeting make sure to have that person in your network so that he's like even if he's like maybe he's not seeing all your posts but he will be seeing some of your posts right and that is really a good thing so uh, i i add a lot of people in my linkedin network and um, if you can see like i have like 10 words spending and then if i go to my linkedin's uh sent that is like 83 one which are like pending to like accept so uh, i have a lot of people in my network and uh, which is really helpful it creates a lot of engagement on my post as well so uh definitely a good comment um that uh, once you get the link profile make sure to just send a connection request and add that person in your network right okay so um let's move to one using like csp so i'm just trying to find um good good uh, spies that i can show you um okay let's use google maps one um and using like maybe yeah this this try first google sheet so um i have this test google sheet here and um what I'm going to do here, I need, I will need map URL. So if you go to uh, Spice page, you can see like what this requires. This requires only search link, right? So I need to create some search links here, and then I don't need to do anything here. I can do some limits here as well, like how many pages I want to like pull. And uh, let me just like expand this. Now, if I go to like maps.google.com. And then if I do something like um, agencies in LA. Okay, so now I have all these like agencies here in LA. I just grab the URL or maybe like I can some add some more filters. Rating should be like maybe four point and up done. And now I have some more filtered results with ratings four and above. I'm just going to copy this search URL from here and come to my Google Sheet. Is that link here, right? And let's just expand this more. So this is one. Now, uh, what I'm going to do? Uh, see, let's say like I want to like target all the agencies which are there in the U.S. 
but I'll start with like in the in the California region, so LA, and then maybe like I can do um, San Jose. Okay, so I have got this one filters four and up done. Grab the URL, come back here, paste it right in limits. Um, I'm not going to use this one, but I'll just write 10 and 15. So we can add like more details here. And uh, once your sheet is like ready, just go to that share button and then get shareable link and then can view since we don't we are not writing anything to your google sheet we just need view permission just copy this link here okay so this one says anyone at view recorder which is not good i want to like make it publicly visible so anyone can find and view using this link that is one the one that i need so i'm going to click on now that like you have your google sheet ready just come back here, click on Google Sheet URL, and just paste your Google Sheet here, right? So now you, you saw that fetching column thing. If I remove this again and click here, it says fetching columns, right? So it will fetch the columns which are there in your Google Sheet. And then all we need to do is like just map that data. So it says select column. So column A is like map URL, column B is limits, right? We can see that here. So we have like the then we have first column as map URL and second is limits, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and like map the column A, which is the search heading. And number of pages, I'm going to keep that optional. Uh, since I have mentioned like 10 and 15. So if we run this automation, it's going to take a lot of time. Um, maybe like I can just make it one and one so that it doesn't take much time um, just, because I'm just doing the demo, right? I don't want to like run the whole automation at once. And then limits is column B. And now I have mapped this. This is very important question here. Does the sheet have the first row for headers? So as we can see here, um, the first row is headers, right? So if you have headers, make sure to like check this box here and process on years. If you are, don't want to run the same thing again and again, just you can check this box and click submit, right? And now it will start the automation for me. Um, I'm just going to click on click OK. Okay, so uh, this was the sheet link, uh, num column one link, column two, number of pages, opening link, scrapping listing from results. If you want to try, uh, just go ahead and try this. Uh, I'm, I'm checking the comments to make sure like we are not missing anything. So we can try everything in parallel and just try it on your side and um, do let me know if you are facing any issues about any of any of the spices using Google Sheet. So if you want to process a lot of data at once, just prepare a Google Sheet and just follow the steps that I did. Clicking on Google Sheet, pasting your column or Google Sheet URL here, mapping the columns properly. And then if you have headers or like maybe the the first column is your like this dummy data. You can just click on this button so that we will just ignore that, right? And then you can just click on submit. It will start the automation for you. You can try, uh, go ahead and like try it uh, if you want to try. Okay, uh, so this one is running. Um, we'll just wait for this to complete. And I'll just quickly like show you um, CSV one. So to that, do that, I'm going to use another spice. Um, let's just try something. Let's just go to all spices. And um, extract all videos from YouTube channel. Comment on YouTube. This, this I think this rolled out today. So um, maybe I'll be adding this on in the release note. You can now like add comments on any YouTube uh, video using like spin text, which is a very cool thing. Uh, I'll explain that in another video. Uh, let's do this. Um, scrape a link YouTube channel, right? So, um, CSV file upload. Let me just prepare um, my CSV quickly. Uh, if I go to here and click on new, just shoot. And then I'll just make it. Um, 
video or channel names right if i go to youtube and then maybe um the exo channel is the one i'll add here um uh, channel link what i'm going to do here i'm like creating this google sheet and then i'll download this as like csv and then process it right because I, if i create in my computer you won't be able to like see it. so i just want to like create here uh, so first one is like my channel and then let's just try maybe um that ltd life this one i follow a lot um it's time for the taco truck okay and this is done we'll just try with two and you can add more here and once you are done with this just go um i'm just going ahead and like downloading this as like csv file you can create csvs in your computer right you don't have to like create this here this i'm just doing it so that i can show you and now i have that csv ready i'm going to click on csv file upload and now you will see this option to drop your file here right so i'm going just going to like drag it and drop the file here so now you can see like the all the data that i had like added here channel link and then some links you can see that here right and now since like the first row is like this header this the name the title name so i'm just going to click this box so that the first one is removed from one now i it is asking me to like match the input field so i'm just going to click ahead and click on this because like the first this only one column right and this is like the channel link so i'll just map this so you can just click here and then click on channel link so this will be mapped right and once this is done all you need to do is like click on execute csv right and let's just run this one as well so this will start the automation for me and now it will it is like pulling all the videos um from each of those channels one is like texo and another one is like that ltd live and since we we ran two spices one with csv and one with full sheet let's go to results page and see what is happening um okay so it looks like our google map with google sheet took around like 2 minutes and 40 seconds to execute everything let's just click on results okay so we have um 8020 uh this is url employment agency address la let's just see maybe like 50 and so you can see that we pull like all that data right so you can basically like pull a lot of data using google sheet or like csv so like i would highly recommend to use them like if you are processing a lot of data you don't need to like run them one by one just create your google sheet or like csv and then just submit it here it will run the automation it will show you the results all at once so this is really good right so this one is completed now what i can do here i can just download this csv file and since i have now the company name and address as well and even the website address as well even phone number i, I can go to this website and pull all the social media links or i can just take the company name and find this this company on linkedin right and from there i'll pull the employees or maybe i can just pull the director or like co-founder or that that responsible person who is like taking all the decisions right and then i can just reach out to that person and just talk about texo and show how texo can be helpful for his business um and basically this is like the initial step first step to uh, start the all the campaigns and everything and all that this data is going to be really valuable to you well, once you if you have like any business or anything like that you you can just do the website part pull all the social media part, like links or you can take the company name find that company on linkedin find his employees send them connection request right uh, or if you have the, you have the address if you are in la you can just basically go to this company name or contact this person using the phone number and you can schedule a call right so there's like tons of possibilities with data that we get from um each of these spices right um okay so um let's go to the csv one and see what is happening okay so this one is completed as well you can see here we use csv so you can see this icon has here it took 30 seconds 
So let's just click on results. Um, Texo channel total views 8170. Total views on profitable tools uh, is 185,000. And total subscribers, I have like my, my subscribers hidden. So it is not showing here, but for profitable soul tools, it is like 3.62k. So we like described all the channel data, which is there. And we are adding like email here as well. So uh, we are adding like captcha solver, which will solve the captchas that you see on any ch YouTube channel. And you can see the email address right after that. So I'm just, we are just trying to add that as well. So you, you'll be able to see the emails here. Um, so yeah, the purpose was like done, right? You, we, now we saw like two things. One is CSV and Google Sheet. If you are joining right now, um, what we did till now is that we walked through like all the overview of the text of how everything is organized, each of this, what each of these button does, and we ran some spices, right? And then we ran two spices using CSV and one is with Google Sheet. So um, let me just rewind everything quickly so that uh, who is someone who is joining in right now uh he'll be able to like uh, come together right so here uh, you will see all the videos all the basic videos make sure to watch them if you are just getting started this help button will take you to our uh, documentation page right here the videos that i was showing you you can see all the videos here this is your execution time how many time like is left in your account for that day you can see here this is release notes where you can see our like all the features which are coming, what is coming next, everything you, you can see here. This is like notifications. If something is going wrong, something is completed, you can see that here. This is your account space where you can see all your plan details. You can edit your name. Uh, emails are not editable. You can edit company name and everything. And this is very important part where you need to like just choose the what you do and which platforms you use the most right so that we show you better recommendations we send you like some really good emails with the recipes that we feel that will be useful to you based on the platforms you use right so make sure to like select the boxes that the platforms that you use always and here we have this proxy uh which i'm which i'll be discussing next and here we have variables which is also coming right after proxy subscription if you have lifetime deal you don't need to worry about this at all if you have a, if you are on a free, free trial or if you are a tri on free plan you need to upgrade your plan at any point uh you can do do so here so this was like account section now this is spices which are single individual automation that will do something on the web like pulling all any members data from facebook group or uh, liking a photo or finding someone on linkedin maybe sending a connection request or sending a message, right? So these are like small activities that these spices do, right? Uh, so right now we have over 120 spices on the platform. And this was recipes where you can build some recipes. Um, I was like showing this recipe here, which I'll be discussing in, at some, in some time. And here we, we have spices, sorry, public recipe where you can create some public you can use public recipes that we have created for you right and you can see how many people are using it uh here right um so this one is like 478 people have used this recipe and the, we are changing this ui and uh, hopefully like by the end of next week you will see the whole new ui of public recipe library uh our new library is coming very soon and this was results page where I just showed you like all the filters and how you can delete some things or how you can find any spice. If you have a lot of spices in your results page, if you are running a lot of automation, you can find any particular spice using the execution name here, right? So this is going to be really useful. And this was recipes, same as spices. You can see all the logs, platforms, what type of file you have used, how much time it took, right? And by clicking on this result button, you can download the CSV of the data that you will get here or go to that recipe, right? So this is all the things that we just talked about. Uh, so if you are joining in right now, we are all together, right? And if you want to try anything, just go ahead and try it. Uh, we'll try to get, get those things resolved right now in this call as well. Um, what is the output of this search? All agencies, four plus. Um, 
Yeah, so um, I showed you the output, right? So if I go back here and uh, go to results page and click result, you can see the output, right? We get the name, average rating, number of reviews, image URL, category, description. If, if they have any summary address, like the, basically the full address, then um, this is like the log, which is basically, uh, you know that like the small, like short um, Google map URL, you can basically copy this and open it on uh, Google maps, right? And we get the website, phone number, what are their like time, timings, basically opening hours, right? Latitude, longitude, maps link. So if you just want like this, you can click on this button and get the direct map link of each of these listings. So this is what we get. Um, in that Google Map extractor, and one other short way, like quick way to check what details we will be getting in any of the spies, you see this small button right here. What information does it provide? You can click on this, and it will show you like all the details that we'll be pulling from any spies, right? So all things that I mentioned just now, you can see that here. So you can do so by clicking on any spies. Just check, click on this button. What information does it provide? And you will see all the details, right? So, um, if you want to see what details I'll be getting before I use this, you can just click on that button, and it will show you. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about CSV or Google Sheet, make sure to drop this here. Yeah, um, definitely a big advantage uh, for um, if you are targeting for or above ratings uh, agencies in nearby your area, right? So you can definitely apply the filters to get um, some highly targeted listings on uh, Google Maps. Okay, so uh, now we have covered CSV and Google Sheet. Let's just talk about the proxies. So uh, what are proxies basically? Um, so right now, what usually happens when you when you run a spice, we it triggers it sends an alert to our server, right, and we get the data and then we initiate a small function on our server, which gets your data and then it, it opens a browser. It tries to authenticate to that platform using your cookie. It visits like the page where we like pull the data from, right? And then we will pull all the data. We get the results back to our server. Uh, it, it, it's get added into our database and then we'll show you all the logs and everything, right? So in this case, what is happening is that we are like, running some spices running these automations on our server right which makes this platform look like that you are trying to authenticate from a different location right so let's say like our servers are let's say like our servers are in like maybe san francisco and you are sitting in say paris right so if when you run the automation it lock our ser server tries to authenticate from san francisco right which is not exactly your location right so Facebook or any other platform will see this and it sends a trigger or maybe like alert that someone is trying to authenticate to your account from a different location, right? And what usually happens is that they usually like block the account or they will ask you to reset the password, which is from their side is perfect, which is like the great, right? Because it's at the extra layer of security, right? But from our side, we are doing the good thing, but, um, for the platform is more of like a security concern, right? To avoid all of that, we use proxy. So proxy, what it will do, it will make the location look like something very near to your location, right? Not like the San Francisco server location that I'm just talking about, right? So it will move kind of like Texas server from uh, LA or SF to your location, right? That is what proxy does. It changes the server location so that it, it looks more of like you are basically trying to access somewhere from Paris, um, <coughs> somewhere from Paris to your, um, to access like Facebook or LinkedIn or any other platform. That is why proxy is like very much needed when you are running some automations on any of the social media sites. So right now you can see here, I have added a proxy uh, from Best Proxy in VPN, which is very cheap. It costs like five bucks a month and um, I have that open if I can show you quickly. If you have best proxy in VPN, you can just log in and uh, go to your home page. 
you will see this control panel button let me just log in quickly so if you have best proxy in vpn i'm sh i'm showing you how you can add proxy details to texo uh, i explained you why you need proxy basically just to make sure um, all the platforms will see that like you are trying to access somewhere from here near to your location not exactly where our server location is right to make that uh, happen we need to we need proxy so once you log into best proxy in vpn if you are using best proxy in vpn this is the right time to add proxy you can do that with me right so just log into your best proxy in vpn and click on this setup so here you will see two things one is your username and second is your password so just copy these two fields and now you uh, to add proxy on Texo, you will need three things. One is your username, second is your password, and third, third is like proxy URL, right? So if, if you logged into Best Proxy in VPN, uh, the, this is the first screen that you will see the control panel button page, and here you just need to click on this setup button. Click on, click here, and this this will be the two fields that you'll be see, you'll be seeing: username and password, right? Just copy these two fields, and then like two fields are ready for you now we only need the one field which is going to be the proxy url right so i'll just click on authorized ips and let me just check your ips okay so once you click on um let me show you this step again i'll go to like click on home page uh and then if you click on setup you will get your username and password right and if you click on your ips you will see the your proxy url address right so this is your proxy url so you just need to copy this and come back to texo and paste it here right and make sure this is http not https so for best proxy and vpn you will need http so i hope this was very clear for you and uh, let's just check quickly what locations best proxy and vpn has so if, if you're watching this video right now, and if you want to purchase any proxy, you can do so right now from like, just check, check this look like locations. In Australia, we have a lot of like uh, options like Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth, Sydney. In India, we have Mumbai and Pune. I'm in Mumbai right now, so I got this proxy. Uh, in France, we have like Paris, Strasbourg. In Germany, we have Berlin, Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto, Quebec. London. So all the major cities, I think they, they support all the major cities. So if you are in, in any of the cities, you can get this proxy. Uh, in Spain, we have Barcelona, Madrid, right? So just purchase this proxy and just do the steps that I showed you. All you need to do is like go to your member area and then click on setup. You will get user and password, right? Just copy these two fields and then click on your IPs the last field that you will get from here which is your proxy url right just copy these three fields add them on texo and then you are done proxy name can be anything so i travel a lot so i had like this mumbai proxy uh since right now i'm in mumbai um and if i have any other proxy maybe i'll just add something um maybe any other location so this is very easy to like remember so just give your proxy name a good name so that you can remember it and now you are seeing this very important uh, thing here, which is the platforms, right? So let's say you have you have added the proxy and you want to like uh, use this proxy only on Facebook and maybe like Twitter. On LinkedIn, I don't use proxy, so I just want all spices of Facebook and Twitter to use this proxy, right? I even on Instagram, so I will just click on these three fields and just click here. So you can select the platforms. It will be automatically saved for you. And now you will go to uh, to any Facebook spice. You will see this proxy automatically activated for you, right? Which is a really good thing. Um, so this was related to proxy and based proxy in VPN. If you have Luminati or proxy mesh, um, let me just show you quickly about Luminati. Uh, they have written this guide, guys, um, which is let me just quickly show you yeah so they have this guide you can just refer it 
Illuminati uh, slash integration slash Texo. And you can see, follow this guide to add proxy details. Adding Illuminati proxy is like the simplest one. Um, you can do this very quickly. And you, you will get like all the fields prepared for you when you click on this API button. And you can refer this guide on Illuminati but, uh, page to access how you can like add proxy um, on Texo. So I hope this was clear for you. I'll sh I'll share that link this link um, in the in the chat so that everyone can refer it. I'm just publishing some comments. Uh, there are many comments here, but like I was not aware that like this. Uh, this show button when we need to like click on this to approve the comments but uh, we received a lot of comments so the one that i just got right now it says if you want to allow me to connect to this web that website says un unsecure through chrome and Mono, uh, microsoft edge uh, i'm not sure what this means can uh, can you add some more clarifications uh, about this question and then we got another question which says can we target a Facebook personal profile and extract all the friends added by the target account? Um, let me just check quickly on Facebook uh, what we have. Uh, currently, like for pulling all the friends, it all depends on like if that person has made uh, the friends and everything visible, right? So um, if his friends are like visible, then we can pull those members. But I, I don't think we have that automation yet. So I'll just add that in our roadmap uh, to extract all the friends of any Facebook profile, and then we'll try to make it. Okay, so now we got to know about the proxies, um, and we saw the best proxy in VPN and Luminati. If you have proxy mesh, um, I have that guide as well. Proxy mesh is also like very easy one. Um, let me just show you quickly. They also like share all the details and everything. Um, very here you will get like the proxy url right and then right below um let me just log in to my account okay they are asking me to subscribe let me just check quickly if we have that guide so that yeah so we have this guide called how to add proxy mesh proxy on texo so if you go to like your accounts page you will see this proxy details here just check the location so it says it will say like us uh, ca us um fl and all that so just check which location is your is nearest to your location just copy that url and then here you will get the, your username and uh, the password is going to be your proximus account password right so you you got like all the three fields right on this dashboard page you all have to do is like just copy the url the username from here and then you, it will be like the password will be your proximus account password and then come back to texo and just fill the details as mentioned here you can refer this document refer this guide uh, how to add proxy mesh proxy on Texo uh, in on our support. So URL is like support.texo.com and just search for proxy mesh and it, it, it should show you uh, show up on in the search results. Okay, so now let's move to variables. I hope like I'm not moving so fast, uh, guys. Let just make sure to write a comment. Um, Yeah, Proximus is really good. Um, if you are in US, I think for US customer, Proximus is really good. Uh, even the base proxy in VPN is a really good one. Um, it doesn't require a lot of, uh, it is like, first thing is like it's super cheap and then, um, and it, it is working well with the platform. I'm just trying to check the Facebook group ones to make sure. Um,
um, Solvator is saying that it won't allow me to connect to that website. Says unsecure through Chrome and Microsoft Edge. Um, Solvator, can you can you write some more explanation about your um, uh, issue? If you are using Luminati, Luminati is like the best uh, proxy service, right? So if you are using Luminati and you, you don't have any issues with that, make sure, just use that, right? Because um, rest all are like good, but Luminati is like perfect. They are in the industry since quite some time. So if you are good with happy, uh, happy and good with Luminati, just use that. Uh, okay, so now let's move to variables, which is like very important um, section. So what are variables? Uh, so variables are something that you can use across the whole platform. So let's say I use the same group again and again, or maybe I, I'm using the same uh, data again and again, right, across the platform. So, or maybe like some keys like Lemlist API key or Hyperize uh, API token, any of that like token or string that I'm using across the platform again and again. I can go ahead and create a global variable, right? So let's say um, I'm into like this group here. Um, I copy this group URL and then let me just approve some members. They wanted to join the group. Yeah. So I'll just copy this group URL. I'll come back to Exo. I'll just mention that um, Exo group. And I'll just paste the value here, right? We need to like make this much more bigger, but um, I hope this is easy to understand. So just give your uh, variable name some good name and then write your value and click add. Now, this is like this will be added to you, right? And let's say, like, I'm using Lemlist a lot. So if I go here and click uh, Lemlist API key, right? And then variable value, something like maybe I'm not copying the value right now, but I'm just like showing you and click add, right? And this will be like added here. And now if I go to like any spice, let's let's just open maybe like extract. Extract profiles from Facebook group. And um, I just fill my cookies quickly. So now as you can see that I had like saved um, that group URL as a global variable right so if you want to access any global variable that you created in your account you can click on this small like three line horizontal line icon here and you can see your global like variables here right so now since i've like created a global variable for texa group i can just click here and it will be like filled for me right so if you are doing this is like very handy stuff if you are doing the same thing again and again, if you are filling the same data again and again across the whole platform, you may want to just create the global variable, right? So that you can simply use it. So now I've filled the like keys and everything, like and the URL. I'll just in the number of profiles, I'll just mention like five. And uh, let's just extract the members. I hope that I don't get banned. Um, I don't use proxy a lot. Um, since most of the time it works for me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so you can see the global variable, right? Um, you can access all the global variables by clicking on this three horizontal icon here and just select the global variable that you want to use and it will be filled for you. Um, if I go to recipes and let's, I go here, I click on say, this is a, just an example. Let's say I find an email address, right? And uh, I'll fill all the data and then I want to like push that email to Lamblist campaign, right? I can select the integration here, click Lamblist, add a lead in the campaign, right? And here I will need API key, right? So as you know that like I have created a global variable called Lamblist API key, right? Now I need to like map that here. So I can click on this small button plus button here and then select the global variable here. You will see Lamblist API key, right? All you need to do is just click here and it will be added, right? So same thing that I just did uh, in my account, variables, and you can see the variables that I have, right? And the, it will be automatically added in across the whole platform. You can basically use it. So this is going to be really handy if you are using a lot of same data again and again, 
and since we are bringing a lot of uh, integrations you will be using a lot of tokens api keys and everything or maybe same campaign name or email address right if you have email areas right so you want to like save all of that data somewhere on text so that you don't have to like type that again and again so this is where global uh, variable comes handy and um, you can create n number of variables here and save that in your in your account uh, so why i'm saying global variable because we have something called local variable as well and it is only available in recipes so uh, let me just quickly remove all of this so there is like two type of variables here one is global and local so why we create local variable because at some point we feel that like recipes are going to be super big like you can create your whole campaign and everything using recipes right and in your recipe you may be using same data again and again but you don't want to like use that data across all platform right it is only specific to this recipe right so if you are using the same data again and again just in that recipe you can create a local variable right and you can simply use that so if i click on this local variable and let's say um i, I give it a name tech job uh tech job workshop or something i will just in the right in the value i'm just type something like some dummy stuff and click add so you can see uh, i can see my global variable everywhere and this local variable only it will be only accessible in this recipe so if i go back to my spice click on any spice and then click on this three horizontal icon here i can only see my global variables right because local are only local to that recipe it won't be accessible anywhere so this is a very important point that we we all should know the local variable can be created by going to our account and then clicking on variables you can create n number of variables there is no limit on that and then you can create local variables inside a recipe if you are using the same data again and again particularly in that recipe you can do that by creating a local variable and saving that information so that you don't have to like type that again and again so this is going to be really useful okay so now let's see how you can use it so let's say i extract all the members from um my facebook group right and then i i ask for their linkedin profiles but they not all the person give their linkedin profile right so i i want to like find those people on linkedin but um, yeah for group url uh, since i have the global variable for text a group i'll just click that and it will be like filled for me and in number of members i'll just type maybe like 40 or something right and then i'll click plus and then select linkedin and then i'll be using find a linkedin profile right and then in query so in query let's say like if you want to map the local variable that you have created you can click here it will be like added for you right but because since it was like dummy data I don't want to use it, so um, I'll just click here again. And in query, I need to map the data that I'll be getting from previous previous spice, which is going to be full name, right? So I'll just click on full name, and let me just map it quickly, right? Uh, so what recipe will do? It will run this first spice, which is going to be extract profiles from Facebook group right it will pull all the details right and then here it will pass all of that data to find a linear profile and we don't need all of that we only need like full name right so i, I just map the full name but here you can see all the data and their description profile url facebook file url uid what is it is right group name name of the facebook group member since member since in days right so you see the like the variable name basically the description and and description right so this is very easy when you are creating a lot of recipes you may want to like um just save that right or you can want to like just uh, just check what description what is what what basically it it means you can do so here by reading this description so here what i'm doing is like i'll i'm pulling the members from this facebook group and then i'll i'm trying to find those profiles right and um, i don't to i don't want to use proxy for now so once you created your recipe 
and this is very basic recipe uh, just click save here this is saved and then now i'm going to run it and see what what happens so idea is that i'll be i want to like pull all the members from facebook group and then i want to like find them on on linkedin okay this is auto saved let's just run this take me to results recipe started um handling node extract profiles so till this is running let me show you quickly how you can we can use csv or google sheet with recipes i'll check the comments quickly Yeah, Ronnie, uh, I'm going to explain again why um, one, could, one would use local variables. Yeah. And then Jessica is asking, can we run two of the same spices, LinkedIn connection and message at the same time from two different LinkedIn accounts? I want to run this for our sales team, but from all the computers, if possible. So far, when I've tried to do this, I can only do one at a time. Otherwise, they pause and need a bit to key. Uh, this is a very good question. Um, um why why we don't recommend like running two same spices again and again is because um what usually happens is that basically all these platforms will check that you are trying to authenticate from two different computers at the same time uh for the same same account right so if we recommend that like if you are running the same uh spy, same using the same cookie uh you you should not run the two spices at the same time right it, it it triggers a warning uh but we have a solution for that we are bringing organization and teams uh very soon um on the platform where you can add your team members you can assign them permissions you can assign what spices they should execute and what spices they should not uh see right or they should not like run you can uh, like basically do some like heavy permissions and everything uh using our organization and team features and then uh, each individual will have their own limits, right? So you can basically onboard all of your team members, give them roles, assign them spices that they should be running, right? And they'll be using their own cookie to run the spices, right? Which is going to be really useful. So we are being, we are solving that problem. Uh, so right now, I won't recommend uh, running two automations at the same time. Let's just wait for one or two weeks. Uh, and uh, once we roll out our organization and team features, uh, that we had promised um, in our roadmap, uh, then you'll be able to like, do all of that. And uh, there is no limit on the members that you can add, right? So you can onboard your whole team and give them roles and uh, like let all of them run text off um, parallelly. There is there won't be like any issues. Okay, so while this is running, yeah. Um, okay, so this one is failed. Uh, not fail exactly it's just trying to like authenticate again but yeah let's go to uh yeah so there was one question that ronnie had asked uh, that can you please explain why we need local variables so let's just check that quickly um let's just go back to recipes yeah so um i'll show you one recipe which is a really big one. So you can see this recipe, which is group connection recipe. And what it does, uh, it sends a connection request to a CSV profile. I have like, say I have like 20, uh, or maybe like I have say 1500 profiles that is ready. And I want to like send a connection request, right? This is, I'm answering a question which, which was like, why we need local variable uh, inside a recipe. So that is the question that I'm answering right now. Uh, so this is a recipe that I have, which is grow connection recipe. And what it does, it sends up my uh, connection request and the whole campaign is for around like, I think uh, it is for 15 days, not a 15 days. I think it is for, uh, let me just check here quickly. The last delay that I have is 12 days. Okay. Yeah, so it, it is for like around 20 day, 12 days. So I send a connection request 
and then I wait for 12 days until that person has accepted their connection request or not. And then once that person has not accepted the connection request, it will like withdraw that connection, right? It will withdraw that connection request. So you can see the last automation that I have is like auto withdrawal linking connection, right? So local variables are very important when you are using CSV or Google Sheet, right? Because we use local, local variables to map uh, the columns, right? So there are like two major importance of local variables. One is when uh, you want to save same data again and again across your recipe, you can do that using the local variable, right? You can do that using global variable as well, but local variables are like good, right? Because you are only going to use that in that recipe. You are not going to use that across the whole platform, right? So that is one thing. And then second is like, if you're using CSV or Google Sheet, we use local variables to map the columns, right? So I'll be showing you um, like how we do that. But yeah, so this is the recipe that I'm using. And since I have a Google Sheet with profile URLs of more than like 12,000 or something profile URL that I run this continuously so that I'm, I'm like sending connection requests to these people with some messages and everything. And then I wait for some time and uh, 12 days, around 12 days. And then all this like connection, like it, it gets automatically withdrawn withdrawn once if they don't request this kind of uh, my connection request right so here what happens uh first is like i send a connection request and then i wait for a day and then check if they are connected or not if connected then i will wait for some time and then send a message right i'll wait for one day and then send some message like hey thank you for connecting um it's great to have you in my work and all that uh hoping to learn from you right so um, it works really well. I do, I never say that like I'm I'm Texo founder or be a Texo do this and all that. I just say that like it's good to have you in your network. I'm I'm hoping to learn a lot from you or something like that. And then if they don't accept the connection request, I'll wait another five days and then check if that person has connected uh, with me or not. Right? If they, he has connected, then I'll simply drop a message. Since it's already been five days, right? And then if he has not or like. If that person has not been accepted, I'll wait another, like after five days, I'll wait another a week, maybe like seven days, right? And then check again if that person has connected or not. If connected, I'll send a message. If not, I'll simply withdraw that connection request, right? So this is kind of like a campaign that I'm running on LinkedIn. And uh, in last, um, I think in the last two, two, three weeks, I added like maybe 200 of, um, I think 300 plus profiles. Yeah, so a uh, few days back I had checked my LinkedIn and it was like around five, four, something. So maybe like around a week, it's been around a week and I added like 200 connections in my LinkedIn. And all of this, like all these people are like highly targeted profiles. So what I do usually is that I go to my sales navigator um, and then I search for some profiles. Maybe if you go to my search, um, I'm not sure why it's not showing some recommendations here. Uh, yeah, it's for type like growth hackers or something. Yeah, so you can see this growth hacker field, right? Um, okay, now this person. So what I usually do, I search something data like growth lead, and then basically I prepare like highly targeted results, and then I pull all this data and then convert this search uh, sales navigator profile URL into normal LinkedIn profile URL. And then I push all of that data into the CSV or Google Sheet file. And then from there, it starts this campaign. And I have like a scheduled uh, this spies to run after every two days uh, for some time. So this keeps running off for me like all the time. So yeah, now coming back to local variables, uh, once you create local variables, um, if I go to my variables, I have these two local variables here, profile URL and LI8, uh, right? So let me just create a fresh one uh, to explain why we need lo local variables. So let's say you have uh, you have 10 Facebook groups, right? And you want to process all of that at once. You want to find those people you want to extract all the members from all of those Facebook groups, like 10 or maybe 20 or 50. And then you want to find those people on LinkedIn, right? So to 
to do this work, you will leave CSV or Google Sheet, right? So to do that, first thing that you need to do is like create local variables, which is going to be the column names of your Google Sheet. So I'm just like assuming that uh, the Google Sheet that you will have will be a Facebook group URLs, right? And then, yeah, another point is that when you are creating local variable for all those columns in your Google or Google Sheet, in your, in your CSV or Google Sheet, you need to like add any value here. So just click add, no values. Okay, so, just, so this is like additional point. Just create local variables without any value. We'll be using this local variables to map our CSV or Google Sheet. So this is very important. So I'll create another uh, variable name here. I'll just name it as like members right or maybe like total members so let's say like let's just assume that like i have this csv file with two columns one is like facebook group urls and second column is like total members right so just create those two local variables don't add any value just click add once these two values are added now you can use these local variables to map your input right so i'm just going to click on this file here and then I'll just remove this and insert variable. I'll just map this Google Facebook group URL, right? I have mapped the group URLs and this data is coming, will be coming from that CSU Wolf, uh, sheet. So I'll just repeat this step again, because I, I feel that this is, this can be get some, this can get very tricky to understand. Uh, Okay, um, I'm just reading the comments. Uh, yeah, so I was explaining you like how you can use local variables to use uh, with your for your CSE or Google Sheet. So first thing, how many to check once how many columns you have in your uh, CSV or Google Sheet, and just create those column names as your local variables, right? So for this recipe let's say like i have a csv file with two columns one is facebook group urls and second one is total members right so i created two local variables without any value right and now all i can do is like this map them so here i clicked on google url and then click on this plus button and then click here right so this one is mapped and in the members since i have another like csv column where uh, I have mentioned the members. So I'm just going to map this here, right? And then uh, for finding a profile, uh, you'll be just mapping the output of the previous spice, which is going to be full name. You won't be using local variable here, right? So this is done. Now, since, uh, so we the first process is done. Take your CSV of Google Sheet, see how many columns you have, go to variables, just create those column names right so this is very important step and then all you need to do is like just click on csv google sheet just select csv file and then let's i'm just dropping this file here there's no value here but i'm just like trying to show you so now you can see uh these two local variables here right so it will ask you to map those very columns that we had created so facebook group urls and total members right so if you select your if you want to use a lot of data csv or google sheet with your recipe first step will be um, creating local variables with the same name or name doesn't matter basically the names similar to your column names right so i just created like two uh, column names here first one is like total members second is facebook groups and just map that those columns here properly in that recipe right and then the last step is going to be clicking on csv or google sheet clicking on uh, just filling your uh list this paste here and let me just copy this url and then paste your google sheet here and then just map the columns right it will ask you to map the column that we had created which is facebook group url and total members right and then just click submit it will start the recipe for you I hope this was clear for you. This is very important step uh, in recipe. Um, I'll be, I can explain this again, but uh, just drop a comment if this was helpful.
thanks Sony. thank you for the comment um um anina is very upset um seems like okay i'm i'm, I'm going to explain this again uh, quickly I'll explain this one again quickly, uh, how to use CSV or Google Sheet with recipes. Um, so first step will be check your CSV or Google Sheet, how many columns you have. So let's say I have this Google Sheet here and then I have map URL. I'll just change this to um, Facebook group URLs, right? And then I'll just map this as uh, members. And then uh, I'll have like another column, which is going to be a uh, full name, right? And then let's say like our other num name, this is let's say like company name or something. So I have this four columns, right? So let's say I want to use this Google sheet in my recipe. So first step will be creating local variables with the same name as your uh, column names right so just go to um, your open your recipe click on variables and just create um, local variables let's so first one was uh, facebook group right don't you don't like add any value second was total members third was uh, company name and the last one was maybe full name, right? Full name. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, like everything doesn't have to be exactly the same. It is all needed to just map those column names. That's it. So now um, I don't want to use Facebook. Maybe I'll just add another spice here called maybe I scrap page or something or maybe uh, find a company page, right? And this one will take the company name or something, right? So I'll just map this company name here, right? Let me just remove this one. So first one was like company name. So I have this huge CSV or Google sheet, say like 10,000 company names I have, and then I want to run that whole data uh, using this recipe. So I'll just create local variables with the same name as my column name. And then I'll just map that, right? And then, okay, let's just go back. Actually, the second, there's like small bug here where uh, if the second one is not perfect, then let me just create another spice. So in the second spice, if you are not mapping the proper output, um, this gives you the blank screen. So let me just quickly do, create a new recipe here. So we'll first pull the find find a company page, and then from there um, we'll pull all the employees. Right, and here um, just fill the cookies. In the company URL, this will be getting from the previous spice, which is LinkedIn URL of the company page. So just map that. And total number of pages, just mention whatever number that you want to use. That's it. Right. And here, yeah, so I was explaining that you have a CSU or Google Sheet with, say, 10,000 company names, and you want to process all of that uh, using this recipe. So to use CSU or Google Sheet, go to variables create a local variable which is with the same name as the column name. So it will be company name, right? No need to add any value here. Just click add. Go back here. Click on insert variable. Just map the company name. This is done, right? So we have this CSU file here. The fourth column is company name, right? I'm just going to copy this file. And then once you you have mapped everything properly, just click on Google Sheet here, and then it will ask you to map the column name, right? 
because we have created that local vari uh, variable and we have mapped that in our recipe. So I'll just paste this column here. It will show me fetching columns. And now I'll just map the column name, which is column D, right? That's it, right? And you can just, just process the whole CSV file or Google Sheet. Here, um, if anyone has still any questions about how you can use Google Sheet or CSV file with your recipes, please drop, drop that in the comment. I'll be happy to explain this again. Um, Uh, let me just check comments quickly. So I'm just checking comments. Um, so if you create a local variable name, then Google Sheet has the names and you connect them together, right? Yes, definitely you're right. Uh, we just map the local variables with the column names, which is there in our CSV or Google Sheet. That's it, right? And we can basically process all your data at once. So first step, just create local variables, map that in your recipe, then click on CSV or Google Sheet and just map the column name with that local variable. That's it. And you will be able to like, process all of that data. Um, I think uh, this was all things that we need to cover. Um, in this uh, workshop, uh, I would highly recommend that you go ahead and try all the things. Um, we'll be discussing CRM, adding tags, and like how you can use our uh, hyperrise integration, which is coming next week, which is going to be really good. You will be able to create some dynamic images with the data, which is coming from Texo in hyperrise. You will be, uh, Lemlist is already live. I'll be showing you how you can use Lemlist integration um, from TechZord to push emails to your Lemlist campaigns, right? And then we have two major, major things which is coming. One is like webhooks. You will be able to run the recipes using the webhooks. So you can create webhook from your account and then you can add that webhook in any other tool. Let's say like you are using type form or paper form or any other kind of like tool, any tool basically, and you can add our webhook there and as soon as we get the data uh, through that webhook, we will trigger the spice or recipe for you, right? So if you are using type form, you can add a webhook um, on on the type form that it will send the data to Texo. The we only we will you can decide what data you want to send to Texo, maybe the first name or last name or something, right? And then we will we will get the data from type form, uh, run the spice or maybe like find a LinkedIn profile or anything like that and then uh, save that result in your account, right? So this will be like, all those things are going to be really useful, really, it's going to be really useful for your businesses. And uh, I'll be showing all of that in the in the next workshop. So next workshop is going to be all around integrations, Lemlist, Hyperize, Zapier, and uh, Texo Webhooks, which was like one of the most requested feature. Um, and then I'll be showing you CRM as well, how you can add tags in CRM um, and then uh, basically use the CRM data to run spices and recipes. And uh, one more thing, uh, like we are introducing Spintex. So uh, if you're not sure about what Spintex is, uh, you will be able to like, add some dynamic comments in any of the YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn we post as well. So uh, Spintex works something like, um, or um, hi, right, and then hello, right, and then maybe like hey, and then maybe like some wave, right. So you will be able to like do some screen text like this. So this is already live for YouTube, but we'll be adding this for LinkedIn, Facebook messages, Facebook groups, and everywhere. So you'll be able to like add some dynamic comments in all the posts and everything. So I'll be showing you this as well. Uh, so a lot of things that we need to learn together, right, and uh, just. I would highly recommend that like, you go ahead and try things. And um, once you try, ask us your uh, questions. I'll be happy to help you. And uh, just learn Texo. This is going to be a really good tool for a business. And um, I'll be always here to discuss, explain, and like show you all features that we have. Right now, uh, we are lacking with some videos. So that is why I'm just like doing these workshops. 
um our we have some people who are making our videos as soon as some videos are ready i'll be uh, adding that here uh, called videos section where you can watch all the videos and those are not videos that are created by me uh, we have someone who in the us uh, who is creating the videos right so uh, there is going to be really good quality videos that you can watch anytime um it will be added here video library that you will be able to access right inside the text so you don't have to like open the uh, uh, youtube as well and even if you see right now um if i go to this spice uh you uh, we are adding the small videos as well on each spice you can click on this video tutorial and uh, then it will start playing it will start be playing for you let me just mute this audio uh, so you can see how you can run the this spice and you can just click on this like picture in picture mode that we have added as well so it will be like it will keep on being played and you can just listen and try it right so we are constantly trying to improve texo and uh, the whole community is so i'm so lucky to have uh, people like you everyone in the community is so helpful uh, we are getting a lot of feedbacks tons of improvements that we can do and i have all of that in the pipeline uh, so hopefully we will be able to like make text a great platform um, all credit goes to you guys and uh, i'm just like the middle person who is just doing the management and everything but yeah um hopefully it was good um really really thank you so much guys for everyone who joined in uh this video will be available to watch uh on our youtube channel um and i'll be like dropping this um in the facebook uh, group as well so that anyone who is um who wants to watch very little they can watch this video and learn from things um do you want me to like do a quick uh, rewind of everything let's just do that right uh before i go to bed i'm just like feeling quite sleepy but yeah let's do that so the first one that we first thing that we did today uh was the overview of the whole platform so when you click on the logo you see the videos first thing right then uh you go to spices here you, spices are basically single automations that will do something on the web right maybe liking a photo commenting or something or extracting all the members sending a connection request right extracting emails from any social media platform or visiting any page and taking some screenshots right so these are like small activities and which we call texo spices right so here you see your use spices you can click here to view all the spices and we have some recommendations that based on the platforms you use right so three things and you can use this search box to search anything on the top we have this help button where you will go to your support doc um, and here we have some videos that you can watch this small videos that for some quick learnings here you will see your execution time what what is there and how much time you have used release notes what things are coming what we are releasing how everything is going and then at the end here we'll show you like what is completed what is not completed and everything accounts let's go quickly here here you will see all your plans details make sure to change your platforms and what you do here so that we can show you backup recommendations the recipes that we are crea we create you will only get the emails which is like which will beneficial for you and that we only get to know from here right so just make sure you are always up to date with the platforms that you are using so that we can send you some good emails proxy uh, to make texo servers look more of like it is near to your home right so we need a texo proxy for that not texo proxy but we need a proxy for that variables if you want to do this if you are using the same data again and again everywhere across the whole texo platform you can do that using some creating some variables here right subscription if you have a lifetime deal forget about this if you are on the pre plan or trial plan i'm sorry you need to upgrade right so just do that here and let's go uh, spices we already talked about spices um when you click on spice here you can use csv of the sheet very simple just drop your csv file link map the column click submit done csv file just drop your csv file here quickly um if you have headers just take this box then query and click execute done right um recipes chant some spices together to build complex automations we are constantly improving recipes 
there's tons of things that we need to improve in recipe but uh, with your help we can do that in recipe you can see here save button to save run to run the recipe undo if you want to go back to previous step redo if you want to go to next step right csv worksheet creating local variables mapping those csv worksheet file uh, in with the local variables and make sure to map that properly in the recipe as well three things right then to be aware of while using if you are into if you want to use csv worksheet variables again the same thing right um, and i explained you why you need a local variable um, so this this is done and then public recipes this is not really like this is the place where we need to like improve a lot of things here we have very good very less public recipe right now but hopefully we'll make it better so this is like like ready-made recipes that you can directly use it if i click on use this recipe it will be added in my account here it is all created for me all introduced like this map the fields uh the local variable already created right so you can just click on google sheet um and you can just map the fields or you can click on csv file drop your csv file just map the field right so we have created local variables in all the public recipes so that you can create you can use you can basically process a lot of data at once right so this was public recipes results page we already talked about everything here you can select some rows here if you want to delete anything you can delete make sure to use filters if you have a lot of spices that you have used so make sure to do this right if you want to search something make sure to give each your spice education and specific name you can do so by clicking here and doing some like this test, test test right and uh workshop sorry guys um okay yeah, workshops that's good <laughs> and just search them here right um and then go to rest recipes and check the logs see the which platform it is based on uh, what type of file you're using how, how long it took results or any warnings right so you can do all of that in in uh, results page crm simple stuff uh, right now for now um you can see some column names things you want to see you can do that here download csv perform some actions here i'll be explaining this more in the workshop too which is we have will be happening next week and some you can ex this is like profile scraper of youtube channel so we got the profile description and everything um you can add some tags here uh, i'll be explaining this more in the next workshop you can add tag you can add a new column find emails add list to limb list yeah so next to our spice request and roadmap which is you don't need to really worry about all this uh, if you want to like do some custom spices for any non social media platform you can do so here and then roadmap if you want to see what we are building you can do check here our roadmap um we are very open about everything um yeah so this was all about the whole texa platform and what things we did um today and uh, the last update how we are doing at at the moment um so let's see how many members you have we have right now um around 5913 sorry 5793 users are using texo um and uh, we have around um, 3000 users which are our lifetime daily users so rest all, all are like organic people who have received who we got from linkedin from google and everywhere right so we are growing super fast and these are all business persons um so we have over like 6 around like 6000 somewhere close to like 6000 businesses are using texo at this moment and um 75 signups were happened in the last 7 days uh i was not well since last week so i have not done any marketing or came like posting something on linkedin so this was way less number but you usually we see somewhere around 200 to 250 signups every week and in the last 7 days around 1000 people have logged in and used texo so things are going well um, and hopefully uh, one day we'll be making some really good uh numbers to show and um, talk about yeah i think this is it um if you have any questions yeah so one last thing um uh any update on desktop app uh, the last question so desktop app um our beta is already open we have a lot of people who are using desktop app 
uh, for Windows. For Mac, we are experiencing some small issues with the Mac, so we are just trying to make it better. Uh, hopefully, the Mac, ver uh, Mac version will be released next week. But Windows is out uh, for the beta. We have around 50, 60, somewhere 60 members who are using Texo Windows version right now. So uh, hopefully, we'll be opening the beta public for everyone uh, in the next two weeks. But if you if you are watching this video and if you want to be a part of our beta program, just write a comment and I'll share a beta form and uh, you can be a part of our beta community as well. Um, okay, I think um, that's all for today. Um, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, joining this uh, video workshop. And um, hopefully um, in the next workshop, make sure to join this so that in the next workshop, we'll be discussing all the integrations and everything so that uh, you, you learn a lot of things. And this will be like from the basics to the pro version that we'll be doing from this series of workshops, right? So um, let's keep uh, stay updated with in our group. And uh, I'll be sharing about the next workshop very soon in our Facebook group. Till then, peace. Have a have a good weekend, guys. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me. Bye.